And all of a sudden, now that they're in their backyard, they don't like it. Take decisions out of the hands of people that pay a price for being wrong and put them into the hands of people that pay no price for being wrong. Holy crap, what a bunch of border closing bigots. I mean, have you seen this New York mayor? Yeah. All the stuff that now he's 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 calling for Biden to lock up the southern border. I saw that too. I saw that yesterday. I saw that yesterday. I was like, he man, feel so sanctuary anymore. <laughs> aren't you a sanctuary city? Isn't it amazing that you know all these border states now are shipping these yeah. these illegal immigrants up to yeah. New York, and all of a sudden now that they're in their backyard, they don't like it. What is what do you think about the? What's going on down there? So initially, I remember a lot of people being mad, like they should ship them back across the border. Why are you shipping them to these other you know, cities? Like, because they have been doing it across the border and the policy hasn't changed because the people advocating the policy don't have to deal with the consequences. And, and that is, um, I, think it was, I think it was Thomas Sowell, one of the best quotes he, he ever had, and he has a ton, was he said, one of the stupidest things that you can do is take decisions out of the hands of people that pay a price for being wrong and put them into the hands of people that pay no price for being wrong. And he was specifically referring to like intellectuals and politicians. It's that they get to send there and wax intellectual and talk about how wonderful and great and tolerant and nice they are. Well, yeah, because they don't got to deal with the consequences of what they're, they're talking about. That's somebody else's problem. The moment it became their problem, Holy crap, what a bunch of border closing bigots. Golly gee willikers. Turns out, turns out that there's actual, you know, problems with respect to resource allocation and things like that, that this wasn't stuff that racist Texans and Arizonans were making up. Um, so I told, look, I said to people that were like, well, they should have done this or they shouldn't do that. I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm sorry. The only way you are going to get woke progressives to actually understand the consequences of their worldview is for them to experience the consequences of it. That's it. As long as they can outsource the consequences to other people and they can just sit there and be happy, nice, tolerant people, well then fine. They'll, they'll do it all day long. They will fight to the last drop of your blood. All right? But the moment, now look, the thing I don't like, um, I mean, obviously we're talking about flesh and blood people here. Mm -hmm. um, but at least from what Abbott's saying and DeSantis and everyone else, they're not rounding him up, putting him on a bus and saying, they're say, saying, who would like to go to New York? Who would like to go to Chicago? Who would like to go to Martha's Vineyard? Now you can argue all day long, do they truly understand what's going on or why or whatnot? But their their goal, let's face it, their goal was not to get to you know, a border town in Texas. Their goal was not to get to a border town in Arizona. Their goal was to get to the United States. Well, great. They're helping him get, you know, mm -hmm. even deeper into the United States as a result. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that, you know, again, as, as, <laughs> as my buddy Christian says, you can ignore reality. You just can't ignore the results of ignoring reality. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's the problem is that a lot of people have had the benefit of ignoring reality because their bad decisions were being paid for by other people. And now their bad decisions are being paid for by them. Well, a lot of them have just been able to escape. Yeah. We talked about this earlier. I think, you know, one thing that, and I don't know how you would do this. I, I, I've been saying for a couple of years now, I think it would be tax incentives, but, you know, but um, you, see, you see this with California, you see this with Illinois, you see this with New York, you see it with Michigan, you see it with Minnesota. I know I'm missing a bunch of places, but mm. those are probably, those are the primary ones that stick out in my mind. And you see all these people and they created these, they voted this in. Mm -hmm. They voted in the fact that the state can come in and rip your eight year old kid away from you if they want to change genders. They voted, they voted in the border policy. They vote, they voted all this in and now it's happening. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's, it's, you've got exactly what you wanted. Mm -hmm. Everything you voted, everything you wanted is now happening and you don't like it. And now all of these other states who've been avoiding this stuff are opening the gates to these people that voted this shit in. Mm -hmm. And they're coming here and they're ruining where I live. Yeah. And they're ruining where you live. And they're ruining Texas. They're ruining Florida. 
and it's like this it's like this disgusting plague that's just coming out and the governors are just with open arms yeah come on in come on in you want a tax free state cuz you voted the fact that, the fact that the state's going to take 30% of your wages yeah come here just come on over here. In fact, just spend six months here. Don't even tell anybody until you can tell all your friends that you're still a resident in California. You know, and they're they're coming in. What what do you think about that? So what's interesting is that you you uh, states don't have the ability to obviously prevent American citizens from coming through. Um, but they might but if what, they if they. I mean, what if they had a like a step down struck tax structure like okay you're going to come here you're going to pay the exact same amount of taxes that you were paying in California for the first 5 years <laughs> well, and then we're going to step it down and you're going to pay 50% of that after another 5 years and then after 15 years then you'll get the tax free so here here's what I would here's what I would say i mean um, make them have a little skin in the game i, I believe me I'm very very sympathetic <laughs> the the issue that i have from a policy perspective one of the phenomena that we're watching take place right now that is actually different from what's happened in the past is that people are engaging in more ideologically oriented self-sorting. So it used to be New Yorkers moved to Arizona not because they were trying to flee the tax policy in New York. They fled to Arizona because it's warmer weather. Same thing with Florida, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with a lot of places. And then we started to see more of this with California where you had companies you know, getting up and moving to, to Texas and now Austin looks like Berkeley almost. It's disgusting. Yeah. Um, the, the question has always been, because a lot of this is fostered through economic development. It's been this whole idea like, oh, we're going to get your industry and then we're going to become more economically um, powerful. But the problem is, is that if the bad policies came with the business, then you're, you're setting yourself up for future failure. We're starting to see some more ideological self-sorting, which is to say people are leaving with with very very knowledgeable of why they are leaving and why they are going to the place they go, I, I call it I call it the difference between locusts and refugees. So a, a you know and again people say oh you're accusing people of being insect. It's a metaphor. Don't be a punk. <laughs> locusts destroy the wealth within a particular region, and then they leave when there's no more wealth to consume. So they create the negative conditions which forces them to leave. But then when they go to the new place that has abundance, what do they do? They engage in the exact same sort of behavior. So they just essentially go around as a, as a, as a wrecking ball. A refugee knows why they're leaving, knows why they're going to the place that they're going to, and is appreciative for what they now have. They want to be a part of that, and they feel gratitude for where they're going in the new system that, that has essentially adopted them. The question is, is how do you prevent the locusts while at the same time accepting the people that it, it, it is a great thing for Tennessee if you know people with the same value system who want to work hard and raise their family come to Tennessee. It's not a, it's not a bad thing. Um, it is a bad thing if all of a sudden your state government is giving off a bunch of movie tax credits in order to encourage Hollywood to shoot more films over here to set up more you know industry within Tennessee. And then all of a sudden you've encouraged a bunch of people to come over here based off of manipulation of the tax code, all right, at the expense of all your current taxpayers. You know, one of the things that I get in trouble with sometimes with fellow Republicans is that we will have bills to manipulate the tax code to encourage new business. And what they're doing is they're saying, hey, all of you businesses currently in Virginia, your taxes are going to stay the same. But we're going to give this out-of-state company a bunch of incentive to move here. Now, we still have obligations, so we're still going to collect your taxes, but they get a break. Now, they've tried to mitigate some of this by saying you only get the break if you meet certain numbers with respect to the number of people you employ and everything else. But the problem is, is that like if Amazon comes into Virginia, I was one of seven Republicans that voted against the Amazon deal in Virginia. If Amazon comes in and they set up shop and they build, you know, whatever, a hundred million, two hundred million, three hundred million dollar headquarters, and they start to employ people and they don't make, they don't make their um, their numbers, they have enough political pull to now come back and get the numbers shifted. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest 
and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.